Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. Alan Beyer, also known as the Doctor in the Dugout, and we're on the road today. We're down in Laguna Woods, and I'm happy to be joined by two of my colleagues at Hogue Orthopedic Institute, Marla and John, two of our renowned physical therapists at HOI. And we're going to talk a little bit about total hip and total knee replacement today and the role that physical therapists play in terms of post-operative rehabilitation on these patients. So, John and Marla, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having uh, us. Thanks for taking time out of your of busy schedule, which I know from personal experience is extremely busy at HOI. So let's talk a little bit about setting the stage for how much has changed in the last couple of years and how we deal with patients who've had total hip replacement, total knee replacement, and what's done post-operatively. Um, it seems that everything's accelerated. Everything's speeding up. People aren't spending three or four days in the hospital anymore. Talk to us a little bit about the uh, enhanced recovery and what we're doing to get people up and moving a lot faster. Marla, why don't ladies first? Well, thank you. Um, one of the things I've noted within the time that we've been at HOI, which is about seven years now, is that um, we are no longer having a length of stay three to four, as you mentioned. Uh, for hips, many of them leave within 24 hours, and the knees, many of them leave within 36 to 48, um, significantly reducing um, our time spent um, trying to make it more efficient. So that impacts you greatly. The surgeon's still spending the same amount of time doing the case in the OR, but suddenly you guys get less hands-on, less touch time with the patients. How are you able to get a total hip or total knee patient ready to go home in say a day or two, John, instead of what used to be three or four days. So currently at HOI, we run a program called the Enhanced Recovery Program. And what we do is have certain patients come in ahead of time before surgery to get educated uh, on the do's and don'ts and kind of the specifics on what we do as far as exercises and, and how to get home safely. So that's part of what we do since we don't have as much of that in hospital time anymore. So the process actually starts before they even come in, and that's a perfect segue to what I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit next, which is prehab, the concept of prehab, rehabilitation before the surgery. Correct. What do you guys tell patients to do when their surgery, say, is booked, but it's still four or six weeks out? What should they be doing at home to get themselves ready for surgery so they're going to do the best they can afterwards? Go ahead, Marla. So many people forget that uh, the whole body is involved in the surgery. They focus mainly on the surgical extremity itself, and they forget about the, the parts that our arms and our core play in it. Um, when I ask people, you know, how do you get out of bed at home, all of a sudden they can't answer um, because they, they've never really thought about it. Um, and using your arms, like doing tricep pushes, even from a chair, um, helps build that strength to help you get out of bed when, say, a leg is taken kind of out of play. So the other thing people ask me a lot about, and I'm sure you as well, is let's say they've got bilateral disease and only their first hip or knee is being done. What do they do to try to get the other one able to help them as much as they can after the surgery? Any exercises they should do on the other hip, even though it might be a little bit painful? What, what do you tell people about that? Sure, I, I like to recommend the, to do as much as they can still before surgery. Every little bit helps, whether they like to walk or they do go to the gym, do as much of what they can. So that way after surgery, the, the deficits don't seem as bad, or maybe even prolong the second half of the surgery to, from the other side that they may have to do later. Uh, but it's more of, you know, if you can use it, you should use it. So don't just couch potato it because you're going in to get this thing fixed. Right. Be a little bit more proactive and, and get yourself ready to do, do the job right after it's done. Correct. How about some things that people can do around the house? I know we talk a lot about household safety and how, what do you guys counsel people in terms of getting their home ready for them to be coming home? Not quite 100%, they've just had a major extremity surgery. What should they do to make their home a little bit more safety oriented when they get there? to make their everyday articles accessible. For example, um, people who are working um, in the kitchen or with their laundry um, or their yard work, you can't stoop down immediately afterwards. So put things within arm's reach, like at a counter height, so that things are easier to get to without having to do those deep movements. What other things would you suggest, John? Uh, night lights, good lighting, especially uh, 
for the bathroom areas, tighter spaces, you know, you don't want to trip on the cat or the dog after surgery. Um, so get rid of the cat or dog. Well, <laughs> short term, short term, short term. Yeah. term. <laughs> Throw rugs, you guys give Obstacles that you trip yeah, on now, yeah. you should probably get rid of afterwards because with a walker, most patients go home with a walker and as the walker rolls across the carpet, if your rug's already rolled up and that walker reaches over that, rolls up even more, you could end up on the floor. So Clearing narrow clutter. hallways, obstacles that you know you already trip on now. Bathrooms seem to be a place where a lot of calamities occur, even when sure. patients are sometimes sure. in the hospital. Correct. What do you tell them about things like handrails, tub heights, or what should they have in the bottom of the bathtub? I mean, what kind of tips do you give people on that? So we do recommend elevated commode chairs if, if it fits your commode uh, space. Uh, the the built-in uh, arm rails are nice. The suction cup stuff is kind of iffy sometimes. Definitely have good traction for the, the tub or the walk-in shower, but if you have a seat, it's easier to sit in the shower. You know, you go to wash your hair and face, your eyes are closed. Uh, you have a weak leg from surgery, then you have a slippy floor. Most of your balance is gone, so the last thing you want to do is call 911 once you're in the tub and can't get out. So Yeah, I think that's one that people forget about. If you've got a walk-in shower, try to avoid the bathtub and that big sure. lift height exactly. and maybe put a stool, some kind of waterproof stool in the shower and sit in the shower is probably a right. lot safer for them. Okay, let's go back to that whole what happens in the hospital after a hip or a, a knee replacement. And from personal experience, only three and a half years ago, I remember from my hip replacement, what's typically the, the pathway? I mean, we're starting to get patients up now an hour or two after they get back to their room right after surgery, right, Marla? That's correct. As long as the, that they have their sensation and uh, not numb and tingling and their motor is obviously there, they're moving their feet, they're able to move their knees. Um, we deem them ready to get up and um, sit up at the side of the bed. The program now is Bob, um, bottom off the end of the bed. And we're going to sit them up and as long as things are going fine there, we stand them up. Uh, two minutes standing and no symptoms of nausea or dizziness, then we're going to walk. You know, a lot of people are still very surprised that they're going to walk and get out of bed the day of surgery. Hours after even. I, I make mm -hmm. my post-op post yes. rounds lots of times and see them yes. walking around. Exactly. Um, the one thing that people ask me about a lot that they're fearful of that I'd love you guys to cover is stairs. Sure. Everybody always says, well, I think I need to stay another day in the hospital because I have so many stairs at home. John, tell us a little bit about how you teach people to do stairs sure. and, and what are the do's and don'ts on stairs. I usually start by telling someone, listen, if you're doing stairs before surgery, you can do stairs after surgery. If you can walk, you have the ability to do stairs. So whether it's one step to get in your house or a whole staircase or two to get to your bedroom, uh, we usually teach a method of up with the good so the non-surgical leg will carry you up the stairs and then we say down with the bad so that way the good uh, non-surgically can lower you down to the next step so uh, definitely use your handrails and maybe a handrail and a cane if the walker is adequate which we determine you know the safety devices to use uh, but we do we do do it regularly and most patients don't seem to have a problem with it and one thing about that, I think that's a great thing for our listeners to remember, our, our viewers to remember, I'm used to radio, I say listeners all the time, is that up with the good and down with the bad applies not just when you're having surgery. If you've injured your knee Correct. or your ankle or something like that, it always is better to lead upwards with the leg that's uninjured and, and downwards with the injured one. Um, so some last minute, we've got a couple of minutes left here, some last minute tips quips, things that you would recommend people to do to, to get ready again preoperatively and, and how to take care of themselves afterwards to optimize their outcomes because at HOI we're all about outcomes. Sure. I would say that people forget the two main reasons why they will fall if you take out say the uh, chronic disease picture and, and medications and that's to answer a phone or to go to the bathroom. Most of the falls will occur around the bathroom and for that short term, if you can just prepare yourself either to have a toileting um, commodity at the bedside, be it a bedside commode or for men, a urinal, um, you know, that kind of takes the getting up at night, the poor vision, going to the restroom, that takes it out of the picture, makes it much more safe. And then with today's cell phones and answering machines, there's no need to run to get a phone or hurry to get a phone you know, the message will be there for you if it's important. John, last minute wisdom for our viewers. 
you know you're having surgery, plan ahead. Make sure you have someone there to help you at home for a few days. Um, everyone does need some sort of help after surgery, whether it's cooking and cleaning or just there to be the one to answer the phone. So just pre-plan and be organized. Make sure you have that uh, help at home for you. Words of wisdom from the people who are spending more time with you postoperatively than your surgeon is. So thanks again for watching us today. We'll be back again soon. This is Dr. Alan Beyer, your doctor in the dugout. Have a great week.